Welcome to worship. We are glad that you are joining together as the family of God today. Yes, I do have a new hairstyle. It's called, I hope my hairstylist can cut my hair again soon. Whatever day it is, whatever time of day it is, we are glad that you are gathered in worship because worshiping God happens all day, every day. As we continue our series on superheroes, let me ask you this question to ponder. Can a worship leader be a superhero? Let's turn our hearts and minds to the worship of the Lord. If you would stand with me in body or spirit and join in our call to worship. Feel the living presence of Christ among us. We reflect on the silence. We lift up our song. We offer our prayers. We gather at the table. We are fed in body and spirit. We may be apart, but we are still joined together. We are gathered for worship as the people of Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Oh, my soul has 
you remain standing as we join together in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. If the children would like to come right up front where you can see me really good. Well, good morning, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you're here with me again today. I brought my superhero box again. So let's see what it has for me today. Oh, it has my superhero cape. Have to put on my superhero cape. Do you guys have yours on? I hope so. All right, I have my superhero cape now. Let's see what else my superhero box has this morning. Oh, it has something that's going to make you laugh. Are you ready? Are you ready to laugh? Are you sure? Okay. Isn't that funny? Don't I look silly? Are the grown-ups laughing too? I hope the grown-ups are laughing too because it looks kind of funny. I'm going to take it off because it makes me sound funny. We're going to show you a picture on your screen of some clowns. Now, if you don't like clowns, you might want to scoot back close to mom or dad or somebody. But these are all happy clowns. Do you see all these clowns on your screen? This is a group of people that are called the Holy Fools. They put on clown makeup and they go places and they lead worship. And they help people remember that having fun in worship is okay, that God is a God of fun. I have a little version of this picture here. Let's see if Mr. John can get nice and close on it. There's two people in this picture that you know. You may not know that you know them. Right there, that's me. And you see the guy in the back with a girl sitting on his shoulders? That's Pastor Mike. We were both holy fools. And you know what? Pastor Beth was a holy fool, too. We would go and have a lot of fun sharing God's word with laughter. Sometimes we forget that God likes to have fun. Sometimes we are so caught up in worship with being very serious and very quiet that we forget that worship can happen in a lot of different ways. So today, especially on the last song, I want you just to sing and maybe dance a little bit in your room because we are going to have fun worshiping God today. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for letting us have fun. Thank you for the gift of smiles and laughter. Help us remember that you want to laugh with us, too. Amen. Telling on our hopes, we saw him. 
our bread.
would you join with me in the unison prayer? Holy God, you catch us unaware. From burning bushes, majestic sunrises, gentle streams, and family meals, you invite us to know you and hear your message. You visit us in so many ways. Your presence can transform even the most ordinary place into holy ground. Yet we are often blind to you, for we expect you only in ways that fit our expectations, our conceptions. We are reluctant to heed your call, for it asks for commitment. We are filled with excuses and self-doubts when action is called for. Remind us again that we are not alone, that in our weakness is your strength, and that in your call is our joy. Amen. Let's be in a time of silent prayer. Wondrous God, once again we are so blessed to be able to gather in worship from wherever we may be. We are learning that the church is more than a building, that worship is more than a time and a day each week. Help us to see you and worship you in the beauty of every sunrise and sunset in the song of every bird, in the blooming of every flower. Teach us to be grateful for what we do have, even though there are things right now that we wish we had. We ask your blessings to fall upon those who are on the front lines of this pandemic doctors and nurses, firefighters, EMT technicians, police are the first that come to our mind. But there are also those who are keeping the grocery stores running and the gas stations running and the restaurants running. We are thankful that they are willing to come to work so that we can have what we need. Pour out your presence on all of them Keep them healthy and safe as they seek to serve you and to serve us. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture reading this week comes again from the book of Exodus. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched his hand out over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw that the Egyptians were dead on the shore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. And skipping ahead to chapter 15. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we stand before your word, may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This story kind of builds on our story from last week about superheroes. I almost want to say, when last we left our superheroes, Miriam, the sister of Moses, played a part in his safety when he was a baby. And when he grew to be a man and returned to Egypt at God's command, Miriam was at his side in support. We know the story. Moses attempted to get the people freed from slavery. Ten times, Pharaoh refused. Ten times, God sent a plague. And after the tenth plague, Pharaoh finally let the people pack up their things and go. After 400 years in slavery, the time had come for the people to leave Egypt. The women quickly packed their households, prepared food, and got ready to go wherever Moses was going to lead them. All too soon, people ran into problems at the Red Sea. They then got to experience the power of God in an amazing way as God parted the sea and they walked through to safety. Once they were safe on the other side, they looked back to see the water crashing down over the Egyptian army, and they realized they were finally free. Exodus 15 tells us that the women then took their tambourines, and following the lead of the prophet Miriam, they began to sing. Now, did you hear that word there, prophet? Miriam is referred to as a prophet. She is no longer just Moses' big sister. She has developed a relationship with God and with the community so that she is regarded in high esteem as one who can speak to the community for God. Miriam started her life with her baby brother Moses as a superhero, watching him as he got safely to the princess 
And now Miriam, as an adult, continues to be a superhero. The singing and dancing after crossing the Red Sea doesn't seem to really be anything amazing, does it? I'm sure they felt like celebrating. It was an occasion for celebration. The Israelites had escaped from the Egyptians. The Egyptian army had been so soundly defeated that it would not be able to regroup anytime soon. So the Israelites would be able to continue their journey without having to watch over their shoulders for the approaching army. Their way ahead seemed unimpeded. So why not celebrate? And it's not only a time to celebrate, but it's a time to worship because it was God that brought them through all this. Among other things that make Miriam and actually all the other women superheroes in this situation is that the women packed the tambourines. Now think about that for just a moment. Put yourself in the place of these women. They are told they have just a few hours to get their entire household packed and ready to travel for an unknown distance to an unknown destination. They can take whatever they can carry. Space is at a premium. They need food, they need cooking pots, they need clothing. And even with those restrictions, they bring the tambourines. You see, the tambourines were more than just musical instruments. The tambourines were used for worship. These women decided that precious cargo space would be used for their tambourines because these instruments would be needed to praise God. Sure, the tambourines were probably relatively small, but every inch of space was precious. Kind of like when you go backpacking, you're going to camp for a week. Every inch of space is precious. But not only did the women give up space for their tambourines, but even in all the hurry, they remembered to bring the tambourines. The women under the leadership of Miriam trusted that while they were packing, they could know that whatever might come in the journey ahead, there were going to be occasions to offer praise to God and to celebrate God's work and to worship. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was packing the minimum necessary for my family in order to flee from 400 years of captivity and flee before the Pharaoh changed his mind, I'm not sure I would be thinking about times of future celebration. I would be worried about cooking pots and weaving supplies. I would be thinking about what needs to be done next. And I would be preparing food for the journey. But Miriam and the women, they were thinking ahead. The women had already seen God's hand at work in saving the babies through the hands of Shipra and Pua. Miriam had already experienced God's amazing work in the life of her brother Moses. And she had seen that work of God so many times since his birth. I believe the women had no doubt that God would continue to lead the people to places and times of celebration. So Miriam and the women brought the tambourines. We are probably not going to be called upon to evacuate our homes for another location very quickly, anytime soon. 
But I want us to think about our everyday journeys. When we go about our daily journeys, do we bring our virtual tambourines? Do we start each day prepared to celebrate what God is doing in our lives? Not every day is going to be a celebration on the scale that it was on those shores of the Red Sea. Some days our celebration may simply be, thank you, God, that you brought me through this day and it is finally over. Other days will be tambourine celebration days. I'm very impressed by these women who did not forget the tambourines. Maybe it's because I don't always bring my own spiritual tambourine. I am guilty of not always looking for the celebration. I do not welcome each and every day with the anticipation of what God will do for me that day. It's more like how many more times can I hit the snooze button? I often greet the day crawling out of bed, already stressing over what I need to get done in the day. I don't bring my tambourine. I need to be more trusting that God will give me something to celebrate every day, and I need to have my tambourine at the ready. The superhero women of Exodus didn't forget the tambourines or the expectation of celebration that went with the tambourines. They trusted God's guidance. They trusted that God would travel with them on this journey to somewhere. And they had faith that God would give them something to celebrate along the way. I put them in the category of superheroes because they had the faith and the presence of mind to know that there was going to be something to celebrate. They had the superpowers of trust and preparation and celebration. And I think those are great superpowers to have. What's going to happen in your life this week? What is God going to give us individually and as a group to celebrate? I don't know, but I know that I want to have enough trust and enough faith that I bring my spiritual tambourine with me each day. How about you? When Jesus knew that his time on earth was ending, he brought the disciples together for a celebration. It was the celebration, probably, of the Passover meal. A celebration of when the people left Egypt and headed to the Promised Land. I don't know if there were any tambourines at that celebration, but I know that at least initially it started out as a wonderful evening of celebration of the Passover. And then it changed a little bit when Jesus changed things up. So let us come to this table to celebrate all of the mighty deeds of God throughout history. Would you join with me in the responses? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up, up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere 
to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the companies of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper had ended, he took the cup, offered it to his disciples and said, take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered together and on these gifts of grain and grape. Make them for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink it in remembrance of his sacrifice for you. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is probably new to you. It's very easy to pick up on because it repeats with just the change of one word in each verse. It is from the church in Africa, specifically from the Zulu tradition. We're not going to sing it in Zulu. We're going to sing it in English. But it is a, a song of celebration, a song to get up and dance to, a song to bring your tambourines.
our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And be sure to always have your tambourine. Amen.